Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, if you watch my previous video here on the uh, CD32, you'll see that it needed a new laser, still waiting for the laser to arrive. But a few people pointed out that on this particular motherboard in here, the two caps around the wrong way um, and the tops were slightly swollen. Uh, now, I did spot after I watched the uh, video after editing, just uploading actually, the first watch through there, I did notice one of the caps, the one nearest the uh, at this point here, I think there's two, you've got one sort of in this position up here, one down here. The one down here near the connectors and things, the top of that one is visibly, uh, you know, domed. Uh, and I didn't notice that. Sometimes you can get that, you know, if you're looking for one specific thing, like I was focusing primarily on the S and D caps, not giving a lot of attention to those through hole caps, wasn't that obvious. Um, I should have, in retrospect, uh, had a look at those caps anyway, uh, and I'll tell you why. Because Commodore are notorious for always, generally, always getting a couple of caps around the wrong way. Um, I think on the 500 it was on the audio um, uh, coupling, and I think actually you need bipolar caps on there. That's one of the things I've read over the years. So I do have some bipolar caps, I think they're 22 microfarad or something, that I had intended to swap out on the 500 or the 500 plus, I forget which, it might be both. Um, but uh, you know the Commodore generally always I don't know whether they do it deliberately I'm sure they don't <laughs> but there's always generally a couple of caps at least on a, a Amiga boards and things that are around the wrong way or you know let's say need to be bipolar etc I'm just curious what models out there are out there that don't have um, that scenario going on because I think you've got a couple of the audio cap problems on the 4000 I think um, maybe not all the revisions of the 4000, but certainly the 500 and the 500 plus I think are affected. Not sure about the 600, uh, maybe some people could perhaps post comments below. Let me know what other Commodore models uh, do have, you know, a cap, cap or two the wrong way around, or, you know, caps that perhaps, you know, not correctly specified, you know, need bipolar, etc. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to show you to take this apart, I covered that in the last video, it's just the five or six screws underneath. Um, and then we'll just disconnect the uh, the ribbon, as I showed in the previous video. Get the board out, the shielding, and uh, desolder the two caps. I'll show you the caps before we remove them. Uh, and maybe just show, show removal and you know, putting new caps in there. Now the caps I've gone for, I've ordered some, um, I've not got them to handle them, but I've ordered some Panasonic, uh, I think the 10 volts. Now the original ones might be higher voltage uh, spec, but they're just on the VCC rail as far as I can gather. So I'll do a connectivity test between the 5 volt rail and the uh, you know the positive side of those caps, and that'll be a good test to determine whether the caps are the wrong way around with respect to the ground and the VCC connections. So we'll test that on a meter as well, just to just to confirm it. I'm sure it's true, but uh, it's always nice to just see for yourself. So I've got the shielding off there. You can see clearly. Can you see it's domed on top there, and that one's the same to a lesser degree. But um, yeah, these should be like I say. Um, I think ones. I forget which one now, I think that one's across the uh, main for the 5 volts after the switch there, smoothing the VCC rail. And I think the other one's on the, um, doing the same thing on the VCC rail of the video circuit, so uh, probably um, Lisa here would think it's going to be the supply rail to Lisa. Um, so I just need to just check, like I so I'm going to check, make sure they're both just 5 volts. Um, VCC, I think they are, pretty sure they are, because I did, I did have a quick look at the schematics there. Um, and we'll just uh, desolder them and uh, put replacements in. I think the replacements are of a similar size actually. So while we're here, it's worth mentioning a few things as well. In the back end of that previous video there, I think one or two people suggested that this board didn't need CIAs, and that's why there weren't any on there. That's kind of true in the sense that there are no CIAs on here, as we found, you know, looking around the board, there are none. The functionality is built into the Kiko, uh, and I, I know that because if you do hardware diagnostics and stuff on, on the, this system, you can, you know, you get time, the timers are built in there, um, and I think probably the aux, yeah, the aux port goes through here as well, as well as the joystick ports. Uh, one of them could be classed as a mouse port, but yeah, joystick one, joystick two ports. So the CIA functionality is embedded within this. Now, that was one thing that gave me concern, and I suspected that in the last video when I didn't find CIAs. I suspected that this, the, the joystick uh, control ports and things were running through here. And I confirmed that, as you'll see in one of the annotations I think I wrote there. I had a look at the schematics and found that there's a buffer chip. It might be might be that one down there, I don't know, but there's a buffer chip somewhere around there that, that sits in between these um, ports here and a Kiko uh, and the reason I was put, you know um, I needed to see some of that for my own benefit really is that the CIAs fail for fun 
in Amigas, a bit like the CIA's and C64. You know, from ESD, you know, you touch, you know, you touch your finger into the joystick port accidentally, or you're trying to put a connector in or something, or you use one of those ones with a metal ring around it, and you're touching the metal band as you get near the pins. You can introduce ESD, um, and that was one thing that did worry me: the the thought that if those ports were directly connected to a Kiko, you could, in theory, at some point, um, potentially damage a Kiko with ESD and kill you know the CIA equivalent stuff that's going on inside there now it's manufactured by a different company these are manufactured by VLSI so there might be better ESD protection in there but on that same subject there it, you know it's, it's worth um, being caref careful with the uh, you know the edge connector here at the back uh, and as you'll see in the next video when I put the TF328 uh, in there some of those boards and things the bridge you know is ex exposed on the back and you know there's no way to protect against that unless you cover it with some tape or something so yeah i'll be doing that in the next video covering the back of the bridge thing with a bit of tape because it'd be very easy when you're trying to get trying to reach for the power switch on the bar there to introduce esd into the uh, you know expansion slot there um, but the main thing is like i say that the good thing is that the joystick ports are isolated with that uh, buffer chip there from a Kiko, so there's no risk of introducing you know uh, esd in here and killing the uh, the cia's uh, you know, the CIA functionality contained within there. The other thing uh, that was uh, not clear at the time to me, this is obviously uh, Paula here, and I did put uh, an annotation in that previous video there to say that was Paula. But when I looked at this down here, and I just assumed it was an op amp, and I was looking at these two caps here, that's always a clue. If you've got two caps nearby, it could lead you to believe those are coupling caps or something. And I think that's, that is actually accurate there, but it's not um, the op amp, it's the uh, audio DAC for the CD audio. Um, it's coming in there. Uh, the other thing uh, worth mentioning, somewhere here there's um, a CXA, I think it's there actually, CXA 1145 um, video encoder, yeah Sony, CXA 1145, um, so that's where your S video and your composites is coming from probably, uh, I would think. So I've got my SD wrist strap on at the moment, I'm doing this on the uh, mat here. So you can see you've just got to edge that out as you pull it up at an angle there, just remove the shielding. So the cap points we're interested in here uh, are these two here and those two there. So what I'm going to do is just test first of all from ground here um, to each of those four pins and work out which side's ground and then just flip it over and just compare where ground's connected to, I'm guessing, you know, in theory it should be that the ground will be currently connected to the positive side of those caps, which is incorrect. So I've got the meter on continuity here, and if we just test from that uh, ground connection there to each of the pins here, nothing, yeah. So we've got a ground connection there nearest the switch. If you remember when we flip it over, that particular cap um, nearest the switch is ground. Uh, and let's just test the other one. So the other one's here. Again, ground is nearest the switch. So what we should have is the negative side of each of those caps nearest the switch. And after flipping it over there, you can see straight away that both of these are wrong. The negative band on this one is on this side here, so it's not nearest the switch, it should be on this side. And again, the one up here, negative band at the top, that's not nearest the switch. So yeah, these caps are the wrong way around. And something else worth pointing out at the same time there is you can't just use that technique, you know, uh, like for like on any scenario there. You've got to bear in mind we could have a negative supply rail somewhere on a system. That's one mistake I made in the um, that recap of the Sega CD system when I was talking about how you can use the ground rail to confirm which side of a cap is the you know the, the negative side of the cap, and that's true where you've got positive you know supply rails and things. But if you've got a negative supply, you know, say we had minus five coming in here or minus twelve. Um, and one of these caps just happened to be on that rail. The cap could be the other way around, and you know, so just bear that in mind. You can't always just, you know, assume that ground is going to be the negative side of any electrolytic. Um, you know, it, it, you know, it, when you've got negative voltages, obviously, it's going to be different. So apparently, these are six-layer boards, so they may absorb a fair bit of heat. I don't know. We'll soon find out. So we just had some solder on flux on there. I'm just doing the usual thing of. Uh, Using my solder pump, I might need to get the soldering station onto this because I suspect it's going to absorb a fair bit of heat. Yeah, solder's not coming off very well there, so yeah, it's a soldering station job. This, I think. 
So yeah, I've got the first one off. You can see no damage there. I've got a pad blocked there. The interesting thing is, can you see this little two pa two pads across the middle there? So you could actually fit uh, SMD caps, I think, there. I need to test continuity. We'll do that in a minute. But you could mount either type of cap there, I think. Um, so we'll remove this one now. Uh, and I'm just going to do the same thing I've just done, which is to just heat um, and uh, just pull one side at a time just to uh, free the cap up because these six layer boards, well I'm assuming it's six from what, what I've been told, um, absorb an awful lot of heat here. Let's just get a bit of solder and flux on there. So I've just added a bit of solder and flux here. I don't want to heat too long. I mean I've got the iron set to 400 degrees here, the desolder station, but I've tried desoldering um, and it's just not, they're just not coming off, you know, you can't get the solder off there even with the, the desoldering station here. So you might have more success with a modern desoldering station, but with mine I'm finding it's very difficult actually to um, get the heat to transfer on these. I mean that's often a problem with capacitors, is that the you know the pads underneath the traces that extend off them um, tend to be for the supply you know you've got one for the ground one for the VCC rail and they're quite thick traces they absorb an awful lot uh, of heat and especially if it's multi-layered you can find that those rails um, you know go various places on the different layers there so yeah they can be pretty hard to get you know get off there so this is probably the easiest technique actually is just to heat them until they get up to uh, you know, you can feel the soles at melting point. Just gradually wiggle the cap on one side, you know, to to pull one side out a little bit, and just alternate. Just keep doing that until eventually it comes out. There you go. That's nearly off on that side. You can hear it moving there as it slides out. So just give me another minute or two. Should have that off there. So as you can see there, I desolder the cap, managed to unblock the uh, negative side and the negative side of that one, the positives are still blocked there. So I'm going to need to get a bit of flux on there and some desolder braid I think, just try and suck up the flux on both sides. Um, strictly speaking, if I put a finer tip on my desoldering station, and I do have one, I've got the one here that I use for removing the um, O2O off that uh, ACA1220 actually, but it seems to be blocked and I haven't got anything to unblock it because um, it's super 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 fine there, I need some like really fine wire or something to unblock that um, but yeah that would have been the best tip to use, the one I've used is way too big, it's about 2 or 3 millimeters in size but um, the main thing is I've got the caps off there, there's no damage, I can clean up in a minute once I've unblocked the holes so you can see the one I've just done there, I'm now going to do the one up here, I'll just move the camera into the shot slightly in the centre there. Uh, the desoldering station might get in the way here, uh, and I'm using this just for the extra heat really, but you know just add some uh, uh, flux there, and then just use the desolder braid once it's reached, up, reached temperature. Can you see that? That's actually unblocked it already. Uh, that one was easy to do on the other side, but you've got to then flip it over and just inspect the other side just to make sure it's not it's not blocked on this side so then we'll need to do the same thing just get a little bit of flux onto there yeah just a tiny bit of flux there that's all we need uh, and I'm using this chip quick flux I always use this I swear by that stuff it's great but there's plenty of other decent branded uh, fluxes you could use um, and again sorry if this is going to block the shot here but it's just a case of uh, just heating that pad with the desolder braid. I say wait for it to reach temperature. Oh, pressing the button on the desoldering station there. Let's just cut that braid down. Yeah, so you may have to heat for a slightly prolonged period of time just to make sure the um, solder and the braid have heated up sufficiently. Probably going to need to add some more flux there because it's just not shifting at all on that one. Yeah, you can see there's just nothing happening there. So I'll add some more flux. This is one of the things I don't like about uh, swapping out main, you know, smoothing caps and things on boards, especially multi-layer boards like this. Um, the PC Engine um, Super CD ROM 2 is very similar in that you can get the caps off pretty easy, but trying to um, Trying to remove, you know, block the holes afterwards is the hardest bit. You can have some serious fun trying to do those super CD ROM 2s. 
Let's just wait for the iron to reach temperature again because I've just turned it up a little bit. It's just over the 400 degrees mark at the moment, but that's as far as this, uh, you know, high as this temperature, this uh, station will go. So we're up to temperature again, so let's just heat that pad again. Um, we'll just give it a little bit longer this time. It's going to need it because the heat, let's say, is absorbed by all the layers of the PCB there. I think that's unblocked it now. Let's have a look. Yeah, can you see that? That's unblocked. Well, eventually I got there, you can see. Yeah, both free. So I just need to clean up with uh, some IPA now and uh, cotton buds. So I just cleaned up with some cotton buds and IPA. Got a bit of flux there around there, I think we have. So there you go, you can see I've cleaned up all around that uh, area there uh, and around the switch and stuff because it was uh, the flux had you know, travelled quite a way there and the same here, so you know it does look uh, good as new there uh, We've got the old caps here, again you can see slightly domed that one more than this one but uh, yeah we'll get some replacements, now these ones, uh, zoom out a little bit these ones are slightly taller uh, as you can see uh, but not much and I've checked the heights of the shield in here, you know, the gap under here, and it's, uh, it's tall enough to accommodate that. But what I think I will do is the point where the caps sit under here is just put, like I did there, put a piece of insulation tape just under where the uh, tops of the caps go, just to make sure we've not got shorts, but uh, it will fit, you know, these will fit with a little bit of clearance above them. And in case you're wondering how I could tell that, that pillar there corresponds to that there. So it's going to stand at least that high off, height off the board around that point where that cap is so if you stand the cap next to it I'll just show you you can see there's a height difference of a few millimeters there at least so you know the, there will be clearance it'll fit like that there'll be a little bit of clearance there above it but like I say I will just put a bit of tape under the position where those two caps go just to make absolutely sure that there's no chance of a short so I've got the cap in there it's fit as flush with the board as it possibly can be so I just need to just uh, flip it over and just uh, solder the points there and then cut the legs off. So I've put a smaller tip on the uh, desoldering station actually just so I can use that to solder uh, the uh, points but I thought we'll just check this. The battery's going a bit low there so we might not get a very accurate reading but it should still be okay. Uh, but I thought we'd just check these old ones. Yeah so that's supposed to be a thousand you see, 667. Um, let's show this one. Yeah, 650. So yeah, they've changed in capacitance value. Um, we can just check the uh, these new ones I've been putting on here. Uh, now these are Panasonic, the low ESR, 105 degrees, uh, 10 volts, 1000 microfarads. Um, and you can see that, I'll show you the pins, they're not optimal there in terms of the way you need to mount it on this board. So what I've been doing is, is just straightening them like that. Uh, and if you just spread them ever so slightly, when you come to put that back on, you can get it to fit flush. Uh, but if we just check this, I wanted to get Panasonic ones because I wanted something that's going to be uh, fairly reliable. You can see, yeah, just a tiny bit above a thousand microfarads there. Bear in mind, my battery's low on this. Yeah, so the smaller tip on the iron here. Uh, you can see I'm just using these uh, copper shavings actually just to clean the tip up. That should do. And again, the reason I'm using the desoldering station here is just for the extra heat because uh, my soldering iron is nowhere near hot enough um, to allow the solder to you know, pass through the different layers here. And that's all we're going to do is just add some solder flux there uh, and just heat that point up for a good f maybe 10 seconds. It really needs it on this board to, you know, let's say, to allow the solder time to flow through to the other side. And then even then, maybe just add a bit more 
and I can always just use some uh, the solder blade or something just to remove any excess there. That should do. Quite a large blob of solder there, but like I say, I can, can always just tidy that up a bit afterwards. Uh, and we'll just do the same thing on this side and then clean up, uh, well, cut the ends off and then clean up with uh, cotton buds and IPA. Sorry, not quite, quite into shot there, are you? Sorry, that wasn't quite in shot there, at least you could see that now. So, just putting the second one on here, and hopefully you can see the plus marking on this side, and we've got the negative cap, side of the cap going to that. Uh, and that's correct, like I say, these are they're marked incorrectly on the silk screen there. So, just push that down as flat as it can go. That's about right, I think. Uh, and just repeat the process, solder that from the other side, cut the legs off, clean up, and uh, we should be done. So not whether you can see, we can see the cap under there, there's a good amount of clearance there, so I'm not worried about that touching the underneath of here, that'll be fine. So as you can see that's working fine there, um, not got the sound connected at the moment, but I thought it was just worth just uh, powering it up just to make sure it's okay before I completely reassemble it. So I'll get the shielding back on, put the dry back on, put it all back in the case and uh, just show you the end result. So whilst I'm here I may as well uh, deal with some of this corrosion, I really should do this while the shielding's off but it's, uh, it's not going to be a problem, it's just in a really confined area there. So just go over that with a wear brush, um, any of the bits like that that I find around there I'll cover with a wear brush. Uh, and then just go over it with uh, some WD-40. It's a bit corroded down here but it's not, you know, it's just it's just discoloured. I don't know whether these are like chromed or something, you've got to be careful because uh, of the uh, chrome there. Um, I don't see, oh yeah there's a little bit here can you see, so we'll do the same thing there as well. Yeah so that's come off with a wire brush, uh, I don't think there's any more, you can see when I've bent these over I've just bent them over slightly, there's no point in bending them all the way flat again uh, if you're going to be going back in this again. Um, so the final thing here now is just to get a bit of WD-40 uh, onto uh, some paper towel. Um, and then just give this a wipe over anywhere where there's been corrosion like that. It uh, you know, brings it off, you can see, it uh, makes a huge difference. Um, but it, this should stop it from uh, getting any worse. See, that's nice, nice and smooth now, there's no resistance there at all, you know, it's, uh, yeah, look how dirty that is, it's disgusting. So there were a couple of bits underneath the shield in there as well, dealt with those. Um, so the other thing we may as well do while we're here, uh, and I haven't done this yet, is just clean the uh, edge connector here, just got some uh, paper towel with uh, IPA on it, um, just gently, just go over the edge connector there on both sides. Just because I've had flux and stuff um, on the board, so you never know, you know, we could have a, a contaminated connection there. And where you've had corrosion on the shielding, just check inside the case, can you see there? That was where there was a bit of rust on the uh, one of the ports there, and there's a bit more just down there. So, yeah, I'll be cleaning the inside of this as well. So I'll just show you it working again now, I've swapped those caps, but uh, yeah, there will be a part three, because I'm waiting for the, uh, the lasers for this. Well, I've ordered three, so hopefully one of those should be good. Um, and in the next video, I'll show you the TF328. So I just power it on. Now this is using S video, so uh, you should see an improvement in the picture there of a composite from the previous video I did. Yeah, wow, that's fantastic. Super sharp there. Can't get over how good that picture is, actually. Um, I might not bother RGB modding this. Um, anyway, I'll talk about that a little bit in the next video, because I've got the TF328 here. Um, terrible fire um, board. So yeah, I'll cover that in the next video. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. See you soon.